so when we yearn for truth, or we yearn for happiness, what we're really yearning for is a state of constancy. And we're yearning for continuity. And this time-space continuum is always in flux, it's always changing, it's all relative, and there's nothing absolute. There's nothing everlasting, there's nothing really even continuous in the time-space con continuum. It would be like leaving eternity and trying to content yourself with the temporal, with something that's always relative and something that's always in motion. And in, if you go back to the history of science, you know, everyone, human beings, all the way back to, to primates and and through the evolution of man, you can see these moving images, everything's moving. The planets, the galaxies, everything's in motion. You know, even though that perspective has shifted, you know, there were times in human history where we thought the, the sun revolved around the earth. Kind of egocentric, you know, it sure looks that way. You get a bunch of people on mm -hmm. earth and it looks like the sun is revolving it up and down and up and down and like it's revolving around the earth but then Copernicus you know went a little bit deeper and said no we got it backwards the earth revolves around the sun oh heretic mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. strange new idea how dare you reverse everything we've always believed in and it's the same like with science where for many 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 centuries basically time was like that's, that's like, was seen as the absolute, like there's human lives that begin and end, but time is kind of like the context in which earth life and the life of the universe is in the context of time. So they thought that time was absolute, and if you thought that one second will always be one second. You must remember this, a kiss is a, still a kiss, a smile is still a smile, you know, no, time is not constant. And it's so variable that m most people always were thinking, just like they thought that the, the sun re revolved around the earth, that one second was one second, one minute was one minute. It was, it was an increment of time that was universal. Like if you had watches on, on human beings all around the planet, it, they would all go tick, 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 and every second was, we don't have a French second and a Russian <laughs> second. A Czechoslovakian second, an American second, you know, a second is a second is a second. But the most accurate clocks are atomic clocks. And they put an atomic clock on Earth, and then they put an atomic clock on a, in a supersonic jet that was flying around at high speeds to see if one second equals one second equals one second. And the clocks, when, when the plane landed, the clocks had different times. Hmm. They, weren't, they weren't the same. Seconds are not seconds. Minutes are not minutes. Years are not years. Einstein, but a kiss is still a kiss. But a kiss is still a kiss. We'll see. By, by the, end of this, the end of this talk today, Joe goes, no, say it isn't so. <laughs> Please, don't shake my reality that much. <laughs> The fundamental things of apply. time apply, mm. <laughs> but there's really, it's all relative. That's what Einstein was showing us, it's all relative. Like gravity, you know, we think of the pull of gravity and so forth. If you went and could go and experience, like we'll call it life inside a black hole, would be, gravity would be very different and time, the, the rate of time would be extremely different than it is on Earth. It's that relative. We're not talking slight variations, like with the atomic clock, you know, experiment, there were slight variations. But when you go into states of like black holes, the whole time-space continuum, it bends and twists, you know, we talk about bending time, it does seem to bend. There are even uh, physicists who have kind of mapped out time, uh, you know how the, the Course talks about the unholy instant, the tiny tick of time, this little tiny gap that seems to be where this cosmos exists, 
uh, the unholy instant, and basically there are physicists that have mapped out all of time, and what we consider as, you know, 2014 is like taking a little slice through the map, and this is how, this seems to be how things seem to be through a slice, like you take a slice of, through an apple or a slice through an orange, this is just a, what a slice looks like. And again, it fits in with what I was talking about last night, is really what's in front of the slice, we could call it the future, and what's behind the slice is really the past, and it's really all one thing. So the past and future have already happened. Jesus tells us in the Course, the world was over long ago. So he's not only said the world was over long ago, but there are physicists who have mapped it out. They've mapped out the cosmos. And this little slice that seems to go what we call now, is not really now at all. You can't squeeze now in between the past and the future because what is the same is the same. But we're perceiving what seems to be in this moment is the past. We're perceiving, that's lesson number seven from the Course, I see only the past. And everything that we will seem to see in the future is also the past. That's why in the Akashic Records, they have readers that go in and read the future. How can you read the future? People have always said, how can, I don't know how the prophets do that. Reading the future, what an ability. Well, they're actually reading the past. It's not so, mm. so uh, complicated, it's just they're just tapping into the past. Sometimes they're told they can only read so far, they're not allowed to read about certain events. So, that, I've told you that little thing just to say that this goes so deep that we're undoing the all concepts that we have believed in about linear time, because all of those are part of the deception, they're part of the mesmerism that keeps the guilt in place. And eternity is innocence, so it's a lot of undoing to undo this at the core. When I was in China one time, um, uh, the Chinese people were asking me about, you know, all these travels and gatherings and all these metaphors and parables and so on and so forth. And I was saying, well yeah, like when Jesus came, he didn't just flash into earth and do the uh, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, and might, love thy neighbor as thyself, good afternoon, good evening, <laughs> and good night. <laughs> um, it wasn't, a, he could have said pretty much everything in probably 30 seconds, and, and bowed like Truman, and, and done the ascension scene, uh, without all that blood and all that other stuff in there. And, and yet, we learn in the Course that he came to, to correct the error from the bottom up. In other words, he had to speak in terms that humans could relate to. That's why he told parables, and said, you know, for those that have the ears to hear, let them hear. If you have the real desire to understand what I'm talking about, the Kingdom of Heaven is at hand, was his way of saying, it's, it's all right here, right now. It's not a future Kingdom. It's at hand. The hand is very close. But he spoke in terms that people could seem to relate to, even though they sensed he was speaking of something that was way beyond their comprehension. He was making an, every single attempt to put it out in a way that people could relate to it and grasp onto it. And even those teachings from the Bible were so deep that now we have, you know, a 1200 and some page book called A Course in Miracles, and it's still perplexing, confusing to human beings. Sometimes read a paragraph in, in the study group, and then they look to the next person and say, what did he just say? You know? <laughs> then they get into a 45 minute discussion on that paragraph, only to realize that he answers their question in the next paragraph. <laughs> if they had just read on to the next paragraph, they could have saved 45 minutes. But that's the human tendency to try to understand and figure things out. But until the mind's really ready, it's not going to grasp and understand the Kingdom of Heaven, because peace and understanding go together and cannot be found apart. So until you come to a permanent sense of peace, there is no understanding. You might as well just go and keep reading <laughs> and say, I didn't get that, but uh, something's helpful about this and I'm going to keep reading, I'm going to keep practicing, I'm going to keep following the instructions, 
trusting that this is leading me to a very wonderful place, a wonderful state of mind. And that's what we're, we're doing here, we're, we're really joining. So I'll be working from the bottom up. <laughs> so when we talk today, please feel free to raise anything, absolutely anything, because there's no irrelevant questions, there's no irrelevant statements, everything is equally acceptable, equally uh, requested, you know, we want you to, to feel the freedom to just come at it from wherever you seem to be or however you perceive the world, because we're really all in this together. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs>